Well, we've talked a lot about fishermen on this channel, and the reason why we've done that is because they were one of the key arguments that people made uh, for the reason that they wanted to leave. Um, it was very high among coastal communities, even though the EU has done far more to help clean up their beaches than any of the previous UK governments ever actually have. And we, often, often a, couple, uh, a couple of weeks ago, we went over how how they were, the fishing industry was going to be sacrificed um, to Brexit. Boris Johnson is not going to die on a hill for the fishing industry. It is, and contributes to our GDP, less than 1%. It employs roughly about uh, 1,200 people in the UK. It's a nothing industry. The problems of the fishing industry, first of all, are industrialization. The small ships, which are the majority of the people who complain, who are what you very often see uh, complaining about the um, about, about the EU and the common fisheries policies, etc., etc., come from those small ships. Now, we've said this time and time again on this channel, these small ships versus the massive industrial trawlers are can do basically a month what it takes what one of these big trawlers to do in a day so you need to regulate these people should they have the same regulations yes um i absolutely believe that because you can't have these big trawlers going through and then the other you know, fishing boats just going out day after day, just, you know, getting catches. It will deplete stocks. So, and the common fisheries policies, yes, has its problems, but it got better. Why did it get better? Because countries took part as well as got together with scientists and worked together to get it done. That now can't be done. The next problem you have is the fishing quotas, which you often heard here be, uh, being quite banded about. Now, the EU gives out a set quota to every country. However, it is the responsibility of the government to then parcel out that quota to the fishermen. And what you have seen is that the big parts of these quotas have gone to these big massive trawlers and very small slices of these quotas have gone to these fishermen. The other thing that we are definitely going to see is that most of the UK catch that these fishermen catch goes to the EU. About 80% because they eat more fish in the EU than we do in the UK. That is a fact. That is going to hurt the fishing industry. It's not going to hurt the big trawlers, they'll be fine. It will, however, affect the small fishermen. Now, getting on to uh, regulations, this comes from the New European, and it's fishermen fear their Brexit bonus will not materialise after new rules from the regulator. Wait, regulator? I thought all these rules came from the EU. Hmm, let's... Let's just read on, shall we? Oh. So, fishermen are hoping to be exempt uh, uh, from rules set by Brussels, which dictate how much and where trawlermen can fish. Once the Brexit transition period ends on December the 31st, they hope uh, that as a result, to, to be able to catch more fish. But... <laughs> and you knew it was coming. But industry officials have accused the fishing regulator, the Marine Management Organization, or the MMO, of having torpedoed their survival chances of the English industry with the, impos in the imposition of a new app. And by the way, um, it was this industry uh, that is responsible for handing out quotas. 
it is this industry that is responsible for enforcing rules, regulations, and passing out other regulations as well. Fishermen aren't going to escape from regulations. Regulations in this area need to be looked after. Fishing, fishing and fish are a natural resource. They are not infinite, as fishermen seem to think they are, because it's kind of bizarre. You talk to, you, I've seen videos of fishermen arguing um, that they know how important these regulations are and how preserving the fish stocks for, um, you know, their children so that they can go out fishing is important. But in the same breath, they then criticise the exact same regulations that are protecting their industry for future generations. <laughs> So anyway, let's find about this new app. So, under uh, 10 millimeter, uh, 10 meter boats, which account for 80% of all UK vessels, are going to be forced to use the catch recording app in a bid to collect more uh, detailed information on how much fish is being caught by small scale fishermen. Those that do not use it risk a criminal record and fines of up to a hundred thousand pounds. The Coastal Producers Organization represents close to 280 fishermen who operate out of the under um, uh, the, 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 um, the 10 uh, uh, a 10 uh, 10 meter boats. Uh, oh, there we go. And it said the threat of criminalization was a danger to the to the future of fishing communities. Just when the UK's fleet <laughs> fleet of quote long suffering day boat fishermen were expecting to finally catch a break with a prospective Brexit bonus, instead they're getting torpedoed by the MMO, which has randomly it hasn't decided to do this randomly by the way uh, if you look into this, this has been on the cards for uh, quite a number of years um, actually even since before the Brexit vote, they've been looking at digital ways to try and record this information Otherwise, you've got to have a member from the MMO on your boat every single day to try and do this. Quite frankly, that's not feasible. So it's far better to have them um, do this and record it digitally. Now, once again, you'd think they wouldn't mind. Why are fishermen so obsessed about people monitoring the size of their catch? Is it because that they catch too much fish so that they can make more money? Are they being over greedy? I think yes, because I've never really spoken to a fisherman. But to be honest, every single impression that I get from them is that they are greedy and want more money for themselves. And they'll do that by abusing um, the, a natural resource. Um, so we're getting torpedoed by the MMO which randomly introduced its catch app Chief, Chief Executive Jim, uh, Jim Pepper told the PA news agency no other boats under, under 10 metres in Europe are subject to this regime that's because they follow the common fisheries agricultural uh, the common fisheries policy now, there's nothing to say that the EU might introduce this. They might very well. Though who knows? There may be other governments that actually have this already in place. Um, again, I don't know. I'd have to look into it. So, not even in Scotland or Wales. It's madness. The maritime... The MMO... The maritime... Um, what they what they call now? Yeah. So the Maritime Management Organization, um, from what I understand, is a UK wide um, regu a, a, an organ a, a, a government body. So it does, from what I I know. Again, I may be wrong. He may be right in this situation, but from what I can see. Um, doing my own research, Scotland and Wales are subject to the MMO. 
Yet again, it's the coastal communities and a traditional way of life that will lose out. And as we've said before, the problems facing coastal communities, lack of investment, and especially the fishermen in this case, is industrialization. More jobs of fishing have gone from actual catching the fish into actually processing them. Again, that's just a fact. That's just industrialization. Um, you could very well say that fishing is, has, is going through at the moment a industrial revolution, shall we say, and the exact same problems that we saw in the past of industrialization are affecting the fishing industry. Looks like it, that definitely is this the case. And it seems that they can't seem to accept that they need to change. And maybe get with the times, but there you go. Um, that's just my opinion on that. Nope. So, Shadow Environment Secretary Luke Pollard who had previously called for the catch app to be scrapped, accused ministers of introducing even more, even more stringent red tape than the EU ever had. Um, at the, he continues, he quote from his, at the very moment when we had left the EU and its, uh, and its real or imagined burdens, the government has imp uh, is, is implementing the biggest piece of red tape seen by the industry. This is not an EU decision. This is a UK decision. You couldn't make it up. One of the stories that um, articles that I think we're going to go probably through uh, this week, I think we will, is how just because we've left the EU and they think that people seem to think that we all oh, great, we can get all this regulation and red tape. It's actually going to unleash more. Because we were members of the EU and we paid jointly into um, EU regulatory bodies, we now have to replicate over 80 um, bodies for ourselves in the UK. Because who oversees regulations? It's government bodies. Those, because they were EU bodies, uh, because we all paid into them, we got them at an absolute steal of a price because we were all paying into one big pot. Now we will have to pay even more into them. And these bodies are important because you need police to oversee laws. You need uh, judges and courts to oversee that these rules and laws are properly enforced and are in place. Regulations and government organisational bodies and courts... You know, the Brexiteers will always complain about the European court and, oh, the European court, this, this and that. That's what it was there for. The European court was only enforcing the rules and, reg rules and regulations that were passed by the European Union and its member states. You know, don't blame, you know, don't blame the enforcer, blame the law <laughs> in that case. So, Fisheries Minister George Eustace was questioned in the Commons last week about uh, about reducing the risk of criminality for seafarers. He defended the app's implementation. The MMO has made fresh assurances to fishermen that it will not that it will not be heavy-handed when it comes to uh, prosecuting catch app users. Tom uh, Tom McCormack, the MMO chief executive, said that fishermen who are recording catches to the best of their ability, have no need to worry. Uh, and if there was ever a need to consider enforcement or prosecution actions, for example, someone persistently misreporting or not recording at all, that decision would be taken on a wide range of evidence. So, you know, a, a key group and demographic who voted to leave based on on lies um, and misinformation about the EU is starting to get their comeuppance. And in I'm, I'm, I, I, I say this now, I am very split. Part of me is like, well, we told you so. And the other part of me is, well, 
I feel sorry for you. You believed lies of people who used you, who misled you to something that is not going to be for your benefit, it's going to be for theirs. People in the Brexit uh, camp always complain about um, it was millionaires and billionaires who want to remain uh, in the EU. But how then can you defend people like Aaron Banks and other millionaires backing your side, wanting to leave the EU because they want to get out of the EU's anti-tax avoidance schemes? Because that's where that whole the whole Brexit first starts. As soon as the anti-tax avoidance schemes were started and the EU said that um, and the UK tried to get its extraterritorial territorial, um, islands, um, wanted them excluded, like the Cayman Islands, Isle of Man. <laughs> um, you know, they're all there. It's, it's, it's a perfect timeline. It, you can't make it up. That's when Brexit, the word Brexit first started appearing. And now we have been forced out by millionaires and billionaires who want to turn the UK into an oligarchy. Because that's unfortunately what you voted for. You may not think that's what you voted for, but that's what you what you really voted for. And if you thought that in any way that Boris Johnson and the Conservatives were in any way going to stick up for you and defend you, then you've been had, my friend. You've been had hook, line, and sinker.